Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this one I'm excited to share with you a first look at the 76th Airborne, a new Soviet division available in the upcoming Nemesis DLC Plateau de Albion. Let's jump on in. Just to note what you see today is a work in progress and therefore subject to change. However this is planned to be released sometime this week alongside the new map. Let's go through all the units and we'll put together a quick deck. So starting here with the Descent Luas. This is a supply vehicle that is amphibious. It comes with 300 supply per vehicle. You get 20 on a card for 25 points each. Then there's the Gaz, which is a bit more cost efficient. 600 supply per vehicle. You get 10 on a card for 25 points each. Then we have the BMD-1. Nice cheap armoured command vehicle. Only 45 points. Also amphibious pretty handy and we've got the BMD 2k which is probably a better equivalent in my opinion I like the fact that this hat is equipped pretty well with the conkers and the 30 mils and the two PKTs it can rip infantry it can still defend itself against vehicles in a pinch it also has two front armor compared to the one front armor of the BMD 1 so probably going to be the armored preference for me in this division and then we have the Descent Luas, which has a lot of traits here. It's got the leader trait, it's got the amphibious trait, we've got the airborne traits and the airlift trait. Although the airlift trait in this division is going to be completely pointless because there are no helicopters since we are deep in France. Um, but in terms of the price here, 90 points, I think it's mainly due to the fact of the airborne trait allowing you to forward deploy this at the beginning of the game. But you only get two on a card, so leaders in the logistics tabs are limited in number. And you also don't have a fob because it's airborne. So two things to bear in mind there. Moving on to the infantry tab, we have the PKM squad. Classic three strength machine gun squad. Hasn't ever really been too effective, but we do have a really cool new machine gun unit. Um, the 6U6 uh, 12.7mm NSV which can target helicopters due to its optics. So it's got 1,400 meter range against ground targets and then the 1,225 meter range against helicopters. Pretty cool, little machine gun. Not sure how overall effective it's gonna be, but you get a decent amount on the card, so probably worth trying out. Uh, then there's the 30 mil grenade launcher. Then we have the Descent Sapere. This is a four man leader squad does have the shock trait can be brought in with the BTRD. Now the BTRD, it's actually pretty good as infantry fire support, but it's a little overpriced in my opinion. Uh, they're going to get popped pretty quickly with just the, the one armor there. But in situations where there isn't any AT, these things could help rip through things like Sapari or like, um, I guess, engineers with flash launchers, that kind of thing on the enemy side. So... BTRDs are still going to be really, really handy, even if they are quite slow. Then we have the Descent Sapody five-man squad with the Satchel Charges. Satchel Charges, in my opinion, are still in a pretty weird spot, especially for infantry with such low strength, uh, because you're never really going to be able to like run on top of the enemy before they get killed. Um, then we have the Sapody RPO, much better for those anti-infantry capability. The RPO launcher, really, really handy for putting napalm down range and uh, burning your enemies alive. Can come in with the BTRD as well. Then we have the Desan Kamroti. These guys are beholden to the fourth weapon slot. There it is. Um, the smoke grenades have been added to this unit. A lot of new units have been given fourth slots. Um, also a lot of the old units have been retroactively given four slots to get smoke or extra AT or extra sniper, whatever it is. So worth keeping an eye on in all of the divisions, not just the new ones. And this is a five strength squad with an Igla to defend itself. I don't mind it, although the Igla might cause it to get hit by artillery if it fires, uh, but can be brought in with the BMD2. And these are two vet by default so you get a two vet bmd2 and you can see the accuracy here on both the conkers and the 30 mil gets pretty crazy so definitely something to consider then we have the desaniki bmd strong six man squad actually uh, with the four ak's rpk rpg and svd so 
reasonably good AT weapon plus strong weapons to back them up. They can also be brought in with the BMD2, which is probably the main reason that you'd bring these, uh, because being able to utilize multiple BMD2s and BMD3s in this division is going to be super, super important. Then we have the Desan Niki, which is a seven-man squad. They come with a slightly better RPG with the 20 penetration there, 60% accuracy due to their veterancy. Seven strength squad can come in with the BTRD. And then we have the Desant uh, Yuseleni. These guys are a nine-man squad with the AKS 74, RPK, RPK 74, RPG 22, and an RPG 7 VL. So the fourth war weapon slot in this case, allowing for double AT weapons, um, which is going to make this squad incredibly effective at close range against enemy armor because this RPG-22 already has 22 round per minute rate of fire. Then you add the RPG with the higher penetration value in on top of that. This is pretty scary, uh, but they're certainly going to be <laughs> crammed into that BTRD nicely. <laughs> Moving on, we have the Desan Niki Metis. These guys are a seven-man infantry squad with the Metis launcher. The Metis launcher, I think they took away the, the minimum range requirement on these, so they're actually better than they were at close range uh, before, and that kind of negates the fact that they're shorter range than they were once upon a time. So a decent infantry squad still now, the Desaniki Metis, and in the side armor, the 17 penetration is going to still do a lot of damage to a heavy tank, so do bear that in mind. Uh, also, it's just something to point out overall, um, everything's airborne, of course. So all of these units have the airborne trait, uh, and many of them also have the shock trait because they're all airborne forces. Well, next up, we have the Desant Luas with the SBG-9 on it. Um, not going to be particularly useful. I feel like the accuracy nerfs over time to the SBG-9 and also the M40 Recoilless were making these very, very difficult to find value from. So just bear that in mind. Then we have the Ponemichiki. Classic strong infantry squad at the moment due to the triple machine gun. That's basically what they're there for. Uh, they can help out trade infantry at range, but at close range, the PKM cannot be used. So do bear that in mind. Um, like in close combat, when like two units are in the same building or on top of each other in forests, um, this PKM will not be fired. So um, they will lose out in those positions. But if you can stay at like the 800 meter range or less than all of the guns are on target and you're absolutely ripping enemy infantry squad Oh, to pieces. Bear in mind also that they are two vet by default, so uh, really, really strong. Um, then we have the Desant SPG-9. We have the Desant Fargo, so HGM 17 penetration, Fargo M. And then we've got the Desant Conkers, 20 penetration. Having plenty of HGMs in this division is going to be really important because you're going to be uh, struggling otherwise against enemy tanks because the BMDs whilst they are very good and have good conkers on them, are going to get killed very quickly if they get into range of main guns. But finally, here we have the Spetsgruppe V. These guys have eight AKS-74Us, two PKMs, the RPG-27 and the Satchel. So again, not a light machine gun for their machine guns. So at closer ranges, they might suffer against other special forces, but a really, really, really strong squad. Um, like the RPG-27, nice penetration, lacks a little bit of range. Satchel charge at close range kind of makes up for the um, lack of a light machine gun over the PKM. But the PKM is still going to be pu putting down a lot of damage at range alongside the AKS-74Us with the base 2 vet that they get. So yeah, overall, solid squad. Then we have the artillery tab. So, uh, in this one, pretty simple really. We've got 82 mil mortars. Uh, we've got the Vasilek. Vasilek still suffering a little bit on the effectiveness side of things. Um, a fun unit to use though. Then there's the Nonna. You actually get three cards of Nonnas in this, and you get three Honor cards. So, you can have nine Nonnas, which is actually pretty effective, honestly. 120 mil mortar do hit quite hard, especially um, when you allow them 
to get radio on target. Finally, grad launchers, but these are the small grads. So whilst they can help suppress enemy forces quite well, you don't really have the follow up in this division to make use of it. Like grads are fantastic when you have like heavy tanks alongside them because you can hit the enemy with grads and then you can follow up the heavy tanks just like absolutely obliterate the front line. But in this case, it's going to be more of like a defensive use, I think, with just like the 12 rockets there. When you start to become a little bit overwhelmed, you can just slow them down a bit by hitting them with a grad. It could also be useful for taking out um, sort of light support weapons like AA and um, I guess like enemy ATs, um, ATGM squads, stuff like that. Uh, moving on, we have the tank tab, which isn't really a tank tab. It's more of a truck tab and <laughs> IFV tab. But here we have the Luez with the Fargo M. We got the BRDM 2 Conkers, which is actually not too bad. I mean, for 70, for 70 points, you get six of these on the card. I've actually had some decent success with mass amounts of BRDMs. Like, you can bring in three of these for the same price as a main battle tank, and you can easily overwhelm a main battle tank with three of these. So just bear that in mind. Then there's the BMD3, which is brand new to the game, and it's very good. 30 mil cannon, same as the BMD2, but has the Conkers M. Now the Conkers M is the tandem heat round, so it's very effective against explosive reactive armor, but it by standard comes with 23 penetration anyway, so this thing's gonna be hitting hard at range. So really, really strong, 2,625 meter range, 60% accuracy. And then it's also going to be decent against infantry with the two PKTs and the grenade launcher and, of course, the main gun. Um, it does have three front armor, which I believe is one more front armor than a BMD-2. So, yeah, really, really solid. All right, moving on to the recon tab. We have the rheostat. This thing comes with exceptional optics for 25 points. It's okay. <laughs> it does have two PKTs, so technically you could use this to hunt down enemy infantry. And I've actually kind of started to like these cheap exceptional optic recon vehicles more because if you compare it to something like a BRDM-2, you're getting actually really, really good capability out of these for a very cheap cost. Um, the BRDM-2 is still useful. Um, this KPVT can kill light armored targets, so... Um, that is where it comes in handy, particularly at the beginning of the game. You can use these to harass enemy recon infantry early on. Then we have the Desan Rosvedka, a four-man squad with AKS-74s, RPK-74 RPK and an RPG-22. Standard small recon squad comes with a Luaz with a grenade launcher if you want it to as well. Although I think this is really, really costly. <laughs> 55 points. At the moment for that. Then we have the Spetsraj Vedka, Descent Spetsraj Vedka. So nine AKS 74s SVD, no machine guns, bear in mind. Um, but they do come with both the RPG 22 and an Igla. So actually a really, really well equipped recon squad. And at the start of the game, having AA on your units in an airborne unit is super strong. Um, and they can also become brought in with a recon BTRD. So this is going to be like the ultimate anti-infantry vehicle because it's going to be able to spot for itself and then lay down the grenade launcher PKT fire. So actually a really decent recon, or even if it is really slow. Um, then we have the RT Razvedka. It's a brand new squad, really interesting squad. Um, comes with the SIGINT trait. So I'm just going to read this out to you because it, it's probably going to do a better job than me explaining it. But the CUNIT is uh, equipped with radio direction finding systems. Enemy radio signals are intercepted and used to triangulate the approximate position of enemy units. SIGINT units will automatically detect enemy units within two separate detection ranges, even when lacking line of sight. A different label is shown depending on the range without revealing the type or exact location of the enemy unit. 
SIGINT units cannot detect enemy units featuring special forces or false flag trait. So the way this works is you're basically going to be able to use multiple of these in order to triangulate roughly where enemy units are, which is cool, except when there's multiple units within range of this, because when there's multiple units within range of it, it's not going to be as useful. But if you can kind of keep these slightly further back from the front line, you can somewhat triangulate exactly what, what tree line or what building someone's going to be in if you do it properly. So really, really interesting, quite micro intensive. Overall, my opinion in team games this is going to be completely useless, but in 1v1 could be kind of an interesting mechanic. Um, Spesnaz GRU come with the five AS valves, SVD, RPG 22. They have the Special Forces trait, Shock trait, Airborne trait, and the GSR trait. GSR trait, just a reminder, when a unit is not moving, it gets plus one optics. So instead of having very good optics, it will have exceptional optics, uh, which is what makes these units very, very good for spotting. Then we have the Schmel 1. This thing is a UAV, the first UAV that's going to be joining us in Warno. UAVs have their own really interesting trait. Let me just read this one out for you. So this unit is an unmanned aerial vehicle, a drone piloted from the ground by an operator used for reconnaissance. Small, slow and silent, it is hard to spot by human eye and intended to be discarded as bird by radars. Although UAV doesn't have ECM, they are very hard to target effectively by enemy fire. Also, the operator being safe on the ground, a UAV doesn't suffer from stress nor evacuate automatically. The way that this works is there's kind of a hidden stat that because it's such a small unit, it's much harder to hit by missiles or conventional ground AA. So even though it only has two health, it's actually still able to stay in the sky for quite a while and can be very, very useful. Finally, we have the Rosvedka BMD-3. Really, really solid recon vehicle. Comes with the 30mm Conkers M, two PKTs, and the grenade launcher with the three front armor, same as in the tank tab, um, but with the very good optics. And this thing will be very formidable, uh, as it will be able to spot for itself for the HGM at long range, and also spot the infantry at closer ranges to absolutely annihilate it with its armament. Moving on to the AA tab. First of all, we have the Desant ZU-23-2. Now the AA guns have been buffed against infantry. They removed the malice where they were doing half damage against infantry. So now they do full damage against infantry. And the ZU-23-2 is benefiting from that buff. So defensively, these could be really, really good. But offensively, they're obviously moving really, really slow. So not going to be too useful in that scenario. Um, but yeah, defensively against infantry, this could be pretty handy. They're also pretty good against helicopters. So might be something to consider now due to its like sort of dual role capability. But you're probably going to be getting that more from the Screzet, which can be brought in as a transport for the Desan Igla. So bear that in mind. But the Desan Igla, standard 55% accuracy due to the one veterancy uh, on the Igla there, can actually be brought in with a Luaz that can also carry an Igla. So you could get two Iglas on a per sort of card, which is really, really good. And could be kind of used to overwhelm the front line with these sort of infrared missiles. But don't discount the Screzet. It is really, really handy to have against enemy infantry. Although in this division, you're probably going to have the BMD-2s and BMD-3s for that anyway. But next up, we have the BRDM-2 Strela-1. Really nice, fast armored vehicle. Um, can fire very nicely on the move with its Strela 1s. It does suffer 10% accuracy by firing on the move, but overall, you can kind of rush down enemy helicopters with these. Um, so bear that in mind, and you get one free vet. And then finally, we have the Gaz 66 with the ZU 232 on it. So you can either choose between the Screzit, the ZU 232 on the ground, or the truck. And in my opinion, the is always going to be the best option there. Finally, we have the Insane Air Tab. Starting off here with the SU 24, 
MP. This is an e-warplane, so it has the electronic warfare trait. Electronic warfare aircraft have a powerful electronic countermeasure equipment which projects an area of effect. Within this range, any enemy air defense is disrupted with the target unit's weapons losing 20% accuracy. So the way that this works is you fly over the enemy AA and then the enemy AA loses their effectiveness by 20%. And then that's counted, I believe, before ECM. So if you have, say, an SU-24AT coming over with 30% ECM, this debuff is applied before the ECM is considered. So overall, you can really like suppress enemy air defense quite nicely if you use these in tandem. But then we have the SU-24M Seed 2. Um, SU-24 has got a huge buff recently where their agility has gone up to exceptional. And so SU-24 Seed is going to be super, super good. Uh, this is a really nice Seed weapon. 65% accuracy with 28 pen. 5,450 meters range. <laughs> really, really scary Seed weapon against radar targets. Then there's the SU-24 with the laser guided bombs. This has a huge payload of three 1500 uh, laser guided bombs. <laughs> this thing will nuke any main battle tank in one hit. Easy peasy. But uh, they are going to be quite expensive at 315 points. But now they have the extra agility. Well, maybe they're going to be pretty damn good because they are still very fast as well and have the 30% ECM. So I haven't really tried these since they've been changed uh, to have exceptional agility because I believe this uh, laser guided bomb loadout is in another division. Then the, we have the SU-2481. This is a fire and forget KH-29T like air to ground missile. So 30 penetration, 3,500 meter range with 50% accuracy means that you can fly up, uh, stay at like your maximum range and just swing the aircraft around and not really get too close to enemy AA. Um, it's going to be pretty effective for sure, especially again now with the exceptional agility. It just makes all of the SU-24s way more effective. Um, but then we have the SU-24M with the KH-29L. Uh, which whilst it has a better range, it is uh, semi-active. So you have to stay like pointing in the right direction, basically, um, and targeting the enemy unit to hit it accurately. Um, so it's going to be basically flying over the enemy for longer, and that might cause it to get shot down. So bear that in mind. Um, next up, we have the SU-24M. comes with the eight 500 kilogram bombs. Uh, not too bad of a payload, honestly, especially for just wiping out uh, large swaths of infantry. Then we have the MiG 31s. Now, the MiG 31s in this division are on crack because <laughs> they have the R 33s, which we've already seen. But in this case, the MiG 31 AA 1 also has the R 40 TD 1, which is an 8 HE infrared missile with 50% accuracy at 7,775 meter range. A super strong. Super, super strong unit, this, for sure. And then we have the MiG-31, which also has the R-33s and then comes with infrared close-range missiles. It's really funny when you look at the R-60 compared to the R-33. <laughs> look how different they are in size. <laughs> but, yeah, decently strong. Not as strong as the MiG-31. I think this, this is ridiculous against enemy aircraft. This MiG-31... I feel like you're getting baited into firing it at enemy helicopters. You wouldn't really want to do this most of the time. Uh, so, uh, yeah, don't don't just see this as like an anti-helicopter plane because it's really not. Uh, then we have the SU-24M. This comes with the new thermobaric bombs. Really, really cool. So thermobaric weapons ignore cover bonus provided to infantry by buildings or woods. It is huge. Um, while being capable of dealing damage to vehicles, these munitions are less effective than regular HE weapons to armored ones. Uh, thermobaric munitions do not damage buildings. So whilst it doesn't like destroy the building itself, any infantry that's like inside the building is still going to take a lot of damage. And this gets six thermobaric bombs. And the effect on these in game is really, really cool. All right, well, 
with all of that, uh, let's head back to the logistics tab and I'll throw together a quick deck. So we'll start off with the BMD 2K and I'm going to throw in two sets of Gaz and one set of Luas. For the infantry tab, we're going to try out the new machine gun. I'm going to definitely put in Desan Sapari with RPO. So we're going to put some in the Luas, some in the BTRDs. The BTRDs I'll bring in later, the ones with the Luas I can bring in at the start of the game. And that way they can get to the front line a lot quicker. Definitely going to be bringing in some Desan Niki with the BMD2s. We'll bring in this squad as well, the Meaty AT squad. Uh, could be really useful uh, in towns and such, so we'll bring those in. Uh, I don't know if I want to bring them in with the BTRD though, so we probably won't do that. Desert Niki Mittis, always worth bringing. And we'll definitely be bringing in the Spes Grouper. So I'm probably just going to opt to bring in both cards of those. Probably going to fill out this tab. I do need a leader. I uh, will probably go for this 5 strength leader in this tab. And that's going to bring us up to four leaders, right? Don't get any leaders in the tank tab. So I am probably going to have to add more here. Uh, let's go for something like that instead. Okay. So we've got one more spot. We'll probably bring in Desan Pula Machiki. I'll bring them in with the BTRDs. Although, actually, I'm probably going to be using those at the start of the game alongside the Luaz here with the Desan Sapari RPO. So we'll probably set it up like that. Having more Spes Group is nice, but I actually almost think that bringing in Desan Pulamachiki instead of Spes Group for one card is fine. It really depends because we don't actually have any H gems in here either. Uh, but we could also just rely on the BMD2s, although that's not necessarily a good idea. I think we've got to have at least one card of Honkers. It's going to be really difficult, actually, to fit out this infantry tab just because the, the leaders, <laughs> pretty much. All right, let's come back to it in a moment. We don't have a helicopter tab in here, so we might actually have extra activation points that we can spend. We'll come back to it in just a moment, and then I can just fill up the logistics tab with leaders, and we can just have normal infantry in the infantry tab, is what I'm thinking. Uh, this is just going to be like so. Um, honestly, I don't really see any reason to bring anything else. The grads are okay, but you don't really have the supply to use them. And um, the Vasilex and A2 mills are just going to be worse than honors, so just bring in the nonas. Uh, then we have BMD3s. Uh, I don't know if it'd be worth upvetting these. But I'm definitely going to be bringing in plenty of them. Then we'll have the Schmel, we'll have the BMD3, we'll have the Spetsnaz GRU and the RT Resvedka. In the AA tab, we can throw in Iglas with Skrezets. And then upvetted Iglas with Luaz Strucks. And I might also bring the Strella 1 up vetted. Then for air, we can go with the MiG 31s for sure. We'll want to bring in the thermobaric bombs just because they're new and shiny. I will bring in one of the SU 24s. We'll bring in the SU 24 MP and the seed. I think that is fine. So. Actually, I don't know if I necessarily want this one. I'm actually going to go for these SU-24s instead. Because we're going to need missiles that can kill enemy tanks effectively. So we've got the laser guided bombs. We've got the thermobaric bombs for enemy infantry. We've got AT for enemy tanks. We've got Seed for the radar. And then we've got decent air-to-air. -air. That leaves us with a decent amount of activation point so that's going to be six leaders which means that i'm actually going to take the leader out of the infantry tab and we're going to instead put in maybe a second card honkers without the robot 
the robot here is the BTRD with the conkers on it, which is actually not too bad. I've had success with these in the past, but having just some normal Desan conkers there is good. Uh, so we've got Desan Nikimetis, two conkers, Spes Grupa, Yuseleni, um, Desan Niki with BMD2s. Uh, more BMD2s would be good, I think, rather than Supari RPI. I think we're going to do that. Something like this, and I'll upvet those. Sounds good. And um, we can throw in more HGMs here. It's either that or bring in some more infantry in the recon. I think actually probably be better to do that. We bring in like the Desant, Best of Redka. These guys are really good. So I think that basically covers it. Your re your AA tab actually doesn't need to be that strong. Because you, of course, are relying very heavily on your mix. So I think that looks okay. We'll call that the 76th Airborne. This is by no means um, a finished deck. I will definitely have to play this in multiplayer and then refine it. But that's where we're going to leave it for now. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. There it is. So, decent infantry tab, really decent infantry tab. Um, actually, relatively strong artillery. I think as long as you've got like good HGM traps with all the BMDs and the conkers, you're not going to have too much trouble against enemy tanks. And then you've got really, really strong recon to help spot for your abundance of SU-24s. It might struggle to push out in the open a little bit, because in sort of an open field engagement, the BMD-3s and BMD-2s are going to struggle against enemy tanks. But if you can make sure that those tanks are dead before you push, then you should be okay. And then you can just hit any defensive units with the nonners. Sounds good. All right, well, let me know what you think of the 76th Airborne in the comments below. But that is all for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.